recording um, a chatty segment for you because I have um, a few things to share and um, it's going to be a little bit too much for you to read um, the, the subtitles for that. So yeah, I decided to sit down and record a little bit of footage. And I also wanted to thank you for all of your feedback regarding my two latest videos. Um, yeah, your feedback regarding the more silent videos that I want to produce. Um, the reason for that, the main two reasons for that is that um, I'm an introvert and over the years um, it's becoming more and more difficult for me to sit down in front of the camera and speak, to be honest. Um, I, yeah, I just don't have a lot, a whole lot of energy sometimes um, for a myriad of different reasons and um, when I do edit the videos, which is usually quite late in the evenings, um, I do enjoy the you know, watching the segments and listening to the sound of nature in the moments that I have captured and choosing some soothing music and I feel like my voice <laughs> over this kind of footage is kind of distracting and yeah. Um, the second reason is that um, over the next couple of months we are on summer break so I'm gonna have a toddler at home which means that it's gonna be a little bit more difficult for me to record um, quiet moments um, and also as you know by now I'm expecting a little baby for the end of October and I'm not really sure how silent my life is going to be after that so I guess that was kind of a gentle introduction for kind of what the content of my channel is going to be like for at least the next couple of months. So my goal is kind of mix things up a little bit, have videos that have more chatty segments and videos that are more quiet. So I'm hoping that by doing that, there's going to be a little bit of everything for everyone. And I do understand why chatty videos might be more popular, especially amongst the knitting community. Um, I'm a knitter as well, and I love to watch um, video content, and I cannot sit and do nothing. So I knit at the same time, and most of the time my knitting is um, kind of simple and um, I don't have to look at the knitting, so for me, there's no issues following subtitles, but I do understand that um, there's a lot of knitters that cannot do two things at once, um, and especially, I mean, for me, I went through the footage so many times, so I know, I know what's coming, but if you're watching the video for the first time, I do understand that reading subtitles, watching the video, and knitting at the same time is too much, so... Yeah, I'm trying to keep the. I'm gonna try to keep the silent videos um, a little bit shorter, and then the chatty ones because I'm talking uh, <laughs> a lot and repeating myself, and such. Those are gonna be a little bit longer, which I hope is gonna be your cup of tea uh, for those of you that like to sit down um, and knit at the same time. So. This afternoon I wanted to talk about my little linden cardigan which I showed you a little bit of footage of in my latest video. And this cardigan has been on my needles for two years. Um, I cast it on in I think summertime two years ago and I only had the tubular uh, bind off on the on both cuff to do. Well, I had to convert a 2x2 two two ribbing into a 1x1 one one ribbing and then do a tubular bind off, which is fairly simple. But I just, I don't know, just got in the, in, I don't know, in uh, the habit of casting on new things. 
and um, just not finishing something that would only require like half an hour of my time. So um, yeah, as I have mentioned, my goal for this summer is to wrap up all of my older, oldest works in progress, wrap up my patterns that are um, almost finished. So then there's gonna be a lot of patterns coming out mm -hmm. later in the year. And that little cardigan was my on top of my priority list, if you will. It's a cardigan that is knit bottom up and um, I thoroughly enjoyed knitting on this, not only for the yarn, which I'm holding here, and I'm gonna talk about that in a second, but mostly because of the construction, which is something that I have never done before. Um, there's a few interesting elements in this cardigan that I think makes it a fairly engaging and interesting knit to make. Um, first of all, it's I call it lazy um, texture because it is mostly garter stitch, so knit on the right side, knit on the wrong side, with a little bit of texture. So that means that here and there, there's gonna be a slip stitch on the front and um, a pearl on the back, um, which is kind of easy to do because you can read your knitting, so you don't have to follow um, a chart or, yeah, kind of like decipher your knitting, if you know what I mean, too much. Um, the second thing that I love is the 2x2 two two ribbing. Um, I don't, I'm not a huge fan of 1x1 one one ribbing for some reason, but I love 2x2 two two and 3x1. So I added a little bit of ribbing in here. Um, the button bend is worked as you go, which means that um, you don't have to pick up stitches. Um, you knit it as you knit the rest of the cardigan and it has a really pretty little slip stitch chain slash detail to um, really bring up the button band and it's carried on the back of the cardigan. It's a drop shoulder construction so that means that it is knit um, in one piece up to the part where you divide for the left front and the right front and the back. Then it's knit in different segments. Um, there are decreases on each side of the neck bend. Then the stitches are picked up for the sleeves. Um, and since it's garter stitch, the sleeves are knit flat. So you, need, you knit them flat then you join in the round to do the cuff and then you do mattress stitch all the way to the armhole which is very easy because you don't have to assemble the pieces together since you did the little um the cuff in the round um it's just a matter of adding little lock stitch markers and then doing um, a mattress stitch. So it's very easy and it's way better than uh, purling um, and knitting the sleeve around, in my opinion. My favorite detail is joining the front panels with the back. And this is done in two times. It is done um, one side at a time with German chalk rows. Um, so you do a little Mm, three needle bind off for both of the shoulders and then um, some German short rows to attach the um, the button bend to the back um, and then leave the stitches on hold on the back and repeat for the other side and then do a I think I did a kitchen stitch for the few like seven stitches that um, need to be joined together on the very back of the neck um, and that's it um, it's it was a lot of fun to create um, 
And yeah, this pattern was created in um, hand in hand with my Patreons because um, I wanted for the longest time to create a, pa a pattern for them. So I asked them which type of yarn they wanted me to use, which time, which type of um, colorway and weight and the type of garment they wanted me uh, to design. Um, so yeah, we ended up with, I think, a white or an off-white cardigan with texture um, in a DK weight yarn rustic. So this is kind of what I came up with. And yeah, it's been lovely to finally <laughs> finish it after two years, um, especially because our evenings here in Brittany are quite chilly. If it's 28 degrees in during the day, it might go down to 18 in the evenings, so uh, with a little bit of wind. So I'm very happy that I have this lightweight, um, very soft cardigan to keep me company when I'm knitting outside by the fire in the evenings. So. Um, yeah, it's available on my Patreon at the $5 tier. Um, that doesn't mean that you have to follow my work there for X amount of months. If you don't want to, you can join in for one month. So for the other $5 tiers, get the pattern, check out the content that is there. And if you think that it's not your cup of tea, just cancel your subscription and you have the pattern. As for the yarn, um, I've knit this out of BC Garn Semilia uh, Pura, which is a 100% organic wool. And I don't have enough good things to say about this yarn. It is rustic, yet very soft and uh, very airy and floaty, which is perfect for these kind of lightweight cardigans. Um, I would say that it is soft enough. That it, I would say that it is soft enough for baby knits, um, and it would also be a very great introduction for knitters that want to dive into the more rustic yarns, but are kind of scared to. Um, I would, yeah, put this in the categories of rustic yarns, but. It is very, very soft. Uh, there's no itch factor whatsoever. Um, and I'm going to bring it closer to you to show you how beautiful it is um, when you look at it very closely because it is actually a marled yarn. So there's two shades of white off white and it's very subtle and very pretty. So I will link the yarn um, for you down below. Um, like a Ravelry link or something for you to check it out and yeah I'm gonna go back and record a little bit more footage for you after that. Mm -hmm.
then it goes faster. Can we do it? 